Thank you very much. Before I actually get started, I need to ask you for a small favor, everybody. Um, I'm an old man, as you know. We're all, we've, my wife and I have been married almost 50 years, uh, 40 years, sorry, 40 years. Um, and yeah, our, our kids would be surprised. Um, but my wife actually fabricated all the ties I'm wearing this week, and I'd appreciate it if you would help me thank her for these ties. No, 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 no. How about we start at the beginning? Much better. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this is going to be like a movie trailer, right? Coming soon to a compiler near you, yes. The, the, the Standards Committee, WG21, of which I'm an emeritus member, for us, C++17 is actually old hat. We've started working on C++20. And I'm here to share with you tonight a, a tiny taste of some things that are in the pipeline that we're rather optimistic about. And it starts with this observation from roughly 20 years ago by Dave Abrahams, that may be a name you recognize, the Abrahams Exception Safety Guarantees, for example. If you ever write less than, you probably also want the other operators as well. And the status quo, you know, since forever, has been typically, I mean, it's formulaic. Um, you write one operator and you implement the other five in terms of it. For example, this or this. Alternatively, some people prefer to write two operators by hand and then implement the other four in terms of those two, like that or like that. Okay, uh, kind of boring. We'd like to automate this, and we've wanted this for well over 20 years now. This has been an ongoing problem for a long, long time. This is specifically what we would like. Compiler assistance so that we only have to write one operator and the rest just works. Period, done. Uh, we would like something more. It would really be great if we could somehow specify what comparison means for our type, because there are types that should only be equality comparable. You can't order them, like a, like a random number distribution. You can't arrange them in any sequence. You can compare them for equality or not, but that's, that's it. But there are other kinds of orderings as well. And of course we want backwards compatibility. You know, current code should continue to work just fine. So we want this to be opt-in. It turns out that, as I said, we've been working on this for a very long time. The oldest paper that I could find dates from 1995. And I suspect there are some older ones than that that I, I haven't been able to unearth yet. And we've had several library attempts, the notable, the notable ones being the standard RELOPS, and we've had boost.operators, which was one of the first uh, packages in boost, dating back to, I think, 1999, maybe 1998, I'm not sure. But they've proven both awkward and inadequate. They don't fill all the, re all the requirements I set forth. And it happens that in the last three or four years, there's been a resurgence of interest. We've had like a dozen papers exploring this from various angles. I wrote one, Bjarne wrote some etc., etc., okay? So what's recently happened is all of this suddenly gelled, and it's culminated in a recent proposal that the committee has already reviewed for a new operator. This is not something we do lightly. We're adding a new operator to the language officially called the three-way comparison operator Unofficially, of course, it's the spaceship operator, which explains my title slide. Uh, here are a few details. We've picked the precedence for it. We've picked the associativity. Um, there will be a new header in the library because it comes with library support. Here are some of the highlights of how we envision it to be used. You define this operator for your type. That's how you opt in. 
For example, this is kind of the minimum that you have to write, assuming the defaults are acceptable for your type, as we believe they often will be. It's a one-liner. What this does is member-wise compare. And how does it compare met corresponding members? Well, however, those members have defined their own comparison operators. Okay? And when it's all is said and done, you get a three-way result. So what happens when client code says A less than B, or A greater than B, or A, you know, fill in the blank? Well, if the type has the corresponding operator, the compiler will arrange to use it. If it doesn't, and you've provided a spaceship operator, then the compiler arranges to use that and pretends that you wrote a call to the spaceship operator and asks if the result has the right relationship against zero, right? So, I mean, we're used to this because we have this in the standard library with strcom, right? So we know how to do this. Here are some options that, the, that we programmers will have in case the defaults aren't right for us. You can provide your own definition, of course. You don't have to define it as equal default. Uh, when might you want to do that? Well, if not all the members are supposed to participate in the comparison, or if the order of your members isn't quite the order in which you need them compared, you have to provide your own, but you write only one function, and it's going to be used. You also get to specify your type's ordering properties as the return type of this operator. And there is a, a library, a set of library types. You pick one, and that defines what the appropriate operations are for your type. You can choose to have this as a member function, as I've shown, or you can have it as a non-member function by design, your choice. And you can actually overload this, for example, if you want cross-type comparisons. Okay? So there's where you go for more information. I've said there have been like a dozen or you know, 15 or 20 papers in the last three or four years. This is one of the seminal ones. It doesn't have any part of the proposal in it, but it sets forth some key insights that we've based our design on. This is the paper that has the design in it. It also has examples. It has a nice bibliography of the recent papers. Um, it also has the proposed formal wording. There will be a revision of this paper in the next mailing, which will come out um, either late October or early November this year, 2017. And there's a companion paper, which is mine, that provides the library wording, proposed library wording, um, for C++ 20. Uh, we have not officially decided what the new header name will be. We're proposing CMP. That's the one part that hasn't yet been blessed by the committee. We hope that can be done quickly. I don't want to have to type out comparison as the name of the header, but the committee will do what the committee will do. Uh, the proposal, as I say, is still on its way through WG21. We're optimistic. The design has been approved already. Uh, we now have to ha review carefully the wording. Uh, there's not a whole lot of wording, but it's not trivial either. So there is some work yet to be done, but all the words are in these papers. Uh, mine is still forthcoming. It'll be out in the same mailing as the revision of the initial proposal paper. We do not yet have any implementation experience because it seems like the vendors are waiting for at least the initial wording review you know, before they go and start implementing things to try out. Um, but if you're one of those people who likes to hack on GCC maybe or Clang, please come see me. And uh, I, you know, I want to talk to you because we would love to have an implementation of this stuff to play with. And with that, I thank you all very much.